So a stop gap is anything that buys you time to get to a higher level intervention. And one stop gap that I think is fairly unique uh, is a six foot utility cord, which has a ton of different other uses. But for medical purposes, it can be used as a stop gap until you can get your regular tourniquet out and get that applied. Now that doesn't mean just carry the utility cord in your pocket, but maybe your tourniquet is not in your pocket. For some reason it's in your backpack and you cut yourself cutting your firewood and your backpack is 100 yards away back at camp. Right? We've talked about how precious maintaining the volume of blood is. So a simple stop gap they can use is a six foot utility cord which in this case is just an end of the line bowline on one end. I've got an overhand stopper knot on the other and it's back fed in such a way that it pulls out without snagging. So if my tourniquet is not with me, first think about the mistake you made, which is not having the tourniquet in your pocket to begin with and then fix it as quickly as possible, but maintain as much blood volume as you can. You can take this simple util utility cord if I have an injury to my legs, I cut myself with an axe or a machete, I can wrap that bowline around, pull all of that out, then I can go through the loop made on that bowline. I go through once and then I'll come through a second time making what's called a round turn on the inside. And what that allows me to do is whenever I pull tension on this, and remember this is just a stop gap, this is not a permanent tourniquet that would, you, you would use. When I pull tension on that, that'll actually collapse on itself and tighten down. So this is going to slow the blood. It's more of a constricting band. So it'll slow the blood flow to that wound and buy me a little bit of time to get to my tourniquet wherever that is. Once that collapses over on itself, that slows the blood flow, gives me time. And get that out of the way. And of course you would not want to use this as a tourniquet because this isn't wide enough and you wouldn't want to keep it on there very long because you're really putting pressure in a very constricted area around your leg. That buys me time to get my tourniquet. Slide my tourniquet on. And this tourniquet that I'm using this time is the SAM XT, the SAM Extremity Tourniquet. And this has a unique feature on it that I wanted to show you. Uh, it's really a good tourniquet. So I want my windlass to end up here, my wound's right here, so I'm two to three fingers above that. What's unique about this one is when I pull this tight and get it at the proper tension, it's gonna click in place. That lets me know that I've taken all the slack out and now I can transition to turning the windlass to actually tighten that up. And I'm gonna continue to turn that windlass until the bleeding stops and I no longer have distal arterial pressure. So I check my pulse down in the foot. Place that tourniquet on. Run this through. Just because I've got a lot of slack I don't want to get caught. Run that through underneath. Place my time right there. Then I can get rid of this. This is not something that I want to keep on. So that's an, an example of a stop gap. Another example of a stop gap is the tourniquet itself, which we kind of talked about as far as downgrading. I may place this on right off the bat because I know that I have some sort of bleed. I just haven't assessed it yet. I don't know what kind of bleed I've got. I wanna stop the flow of blood, reassess my injury, and then downgrade it if possible. So that's the SAM XT tourniquet. <laughs>